I'm Professor Steve Kane, and I've just released a brand new software package called Ravel, which I've been developing for over a decade now with my colleague and great pro programmer friend, Russell Standish. And we're going to give a live show on it tomorrow. So if you're wondering about whether you should or shouldn't sign up for the live show, this is a bit of a preview for you. So this is the live show link. I'll come back here and, uh, and give the details at the end of my little show here. And what I'm going to show is what can you do with Ravel? What makes it different to other programs? So I'm going to use economic data because that's what I do. But Ravel can handle any data, corporate sales data, global warming data, conspiracy theory data, you name it. It can handle any data that you throw at it. And the Bank of International Settlements is a, is a great source for free uh, data uh, on e economic issues. So this is its uh, front end here. I'm going to go and take a look at the data they have on consumer prices because a major issue everybody worries about now is the rate of uh, rate of increase in consumer prices. It slowed down, but it was pretty extreme for a while there. So if you go into the into the uh, BIS, you can find a dashboard like this, which gives you some sort of information. If you've got a comparison of the United States inflation rates to inflation rates in the euro area, and you can see how similar they are, uh, but and you can take a look at you know, look at Algeria's data and Argentina's data and so on and go through each of the components there. But that's more information than it is knowledge. Uh, now, if you want to actually take a good look at the data, you should download it and load it into your favorite analytic program. And for most people, it's going to be a spreadsheet. Well, I've trimmed this data a bit just to make it easier to load it and to ravel in a short while. But this is the sort of data you'll see if you download the uh, BIS table and what you can see here is it's hard to see at the scale of the screen I'm sure but we've got the frequency of data so it's monthly data and annual data the country the data is for whether they're showing the index which uh, is a, the number is 100 for every country in the database or the annual change and notice that data goes right back to 1661 which I'm going to take, make use of in a short while now if you want to take a look at this data inside Excel well you know where is it way over here somewhere. So I was back at row uh, a, a columns A, B and C and the data uh, for this particular country, that's Sweden, starts in row LL uh, you know, and then you can see sporadic data. It'd be rather hard to work out how to analyze this in Excel. But how about we do it in Ravel? Well let's now go and import that data. This is our import data icon and you get a little widget attached to your mouse that uh, brings up a form, which is this form here, and says, OK, first of all, select the file you want to load in. And that particular file I've called BS CPI data. You'll see why I've got the subscript and the superscript and the curly brackets in the name in a, in a moment or two. Ravel then goes through and analyzes that and says, OK, well, this is, we think we've got three main dimensions here. You've got the frequency of data, you've got the country, you've got the unit, and then your fourth dimension is the date on which the data is collected. So that's all been correctly interpreted by Ravel. I just click on next here and say, well, the next, the, the following, um, the horizontal dimension is the date, and that happens to be a time dimension. And it has two types of time recording, the yearly data and quarterly data. So I'm just going to bring in the, I'm going to bring them both in and, and separate them later using Ravel. Click on import, and now you can see that, that the name of the file has now become part of the name of the parameter and the underscore and the superscript let me give use uh, underscore and the hat carrot rather gave me a subscript and a superscript just for the sake of making the uh, data look a bit better now that's a ravel and when we first load it what you see is a stylized example of what ravel is all about so you have axes of it we've got gender year and country on this you know, hypothetical data axis and when you're moving the dot points along you can see if you had actual data inside here you'd see data for women graphed this way, data for men graphed on this particular point, uh, flip the country around, see it by country and year, compress the data, all these, the, these are all the operations I'll be showing in more detail tomorrow. But what I, to use the data, the data that I've actually loaded from the Bank of International Settlements, I drag a wire out of the X, the output port of the parameter, let it go near the input port to the Ravel, and now you can see I've got date, frequency, country and unit, which again, back to go back to the uh, Excel file, 
that's what you actually saw those three columns here. So it's interpreted those columns as dimensions. We now have a four-dimensional data object. Let's see how we handle it with Ravel. I want to see it by time, so I flip the date axis around to here. Uh, let's take a look. This is all sorts of crazy orders here. Let's now sort this and sort it by uh, alphabetically by country. So I go here, there's the United States, and I can go back to the UK, which is the one I want to take a look at. Uh, and we have the index of 2010. Well, let's take a look at that and look at the annual data, which is the, the data that goes back to 1662. Having done all that, I can now attach a chart and see what we get there. And take a look at it, and what's your first reaction? I mean, my first reaction, and I think this is what most people would see, is, oh, look what happened. Before, before central banks and before large government, prices were constant, and then bank, big banks and government come in and look at the inflation we get. CPI takes off like crazy. So the superficial reaction to that, which is justifiable given this piece of data, <clears throat> is that the inflation we've been going through has all been caused by big government and by money printing and so on. But I want to show a slightly different case there. So I'm now going to use some of Ravel's features here and say, well, let's lock that and uh, call that uh, UK CPI or you know, CPI subscript UK. So I know that it's the CPI index of the United Kingdom going back an uh, enormous distance in time, 400 years and attach that there, and then delete this line and attach it here instead, so I'm showing the same data. I'm going to close the lock, and what that lock now means, whatever I do to the Ravel here, the same data is still outputted through that rock, so lock, pardon me. So you can see this, if you can read the, the tooltip that turns up, date where frequency equals annual, where country is United Kingdom, where unit is index, where 2001 where equals 100. Okay, So that's our that's our CPI data. But there's also data inside here on the annual change. So let's do the same thing with that. We're going to take a copy of that and attach that to a lock. And then I'm going to call this inflation. Clever name, eh? UK. Attach that to the other lock and close that lock. So now I've got CPI and inflation. And what you'd expect, I know I did. Well, I didn't actually because I don't know the history, but if just looking at the data itself as you're doing exploratory data analysis, the obvious implication from this flat line from 1661 right to about 1930, and then the rising line since 1945 ever since, is inflation as a phenomenon of the modern age. They didn't have inflation before central banks and money printing. It's all the government's fault. It's you know, going off the gold standard. That's what caused the inflation. Let's just take a copy of that chart. And whoops, I went to the wrong program. I had to make my, I'll, make, I'll go back to the st standard scale because I made that a bit larger just to uh, make it easier to see on your screens. And now I'm going to go back to full screen here. So this is the CPI, this is the inflation. The expectation is that there's going to be a high inflation after 1945 and low inflation beforehand. Connect the two. Oh dear, what the hell's going on there? Look, look, look the highest inflation in the post-war, in the, in the uh, post-central bank era was what is that, 25% in 1917. We had the peak of 22% uh, in 1975. But the biggest rate of inflation was far higher back in 1800. It was 34%. Uh, but what's also happening, which hasn't been happening in the post-war period, is periods of deflation, whereas in 19, 1802, prices fell by 26%. So what we had before central banks, governments, money printing, yada, 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 was incredible volatility in prices both up and down. Periods of high inflation followed by periods of very sharp deflation. So what uh, the, the, the superficial look at the data would tell you that, you know, it's central banks that are the problem, etc., etc. Take a look at the detailed data and the answer is, actually, maybe they save us from periods of serious deflation and maybe deflation might be a problem. Let's do further investigation. That's a very, very rough way of showing very quick way of showing how I can use Ravel for the exploratory data analysis. And if I now, let's actually 
uh, go to another country here, for example, I'll go back to uh, the index and let's take a look at, uh, don't think I've got good data on it, let's go for Japan, see what they have in terms of Japanese data. And I can now also connect that data to here. And uh, then I've got the Japanese inflation rate, which was actually higher than the UK inflation rate. Let's just take a look at the inflation as well. Uh, I need to put a lock in there to make that possible, so I'll just do that quickly. And delete this line here. And then go to the... Where are we? Annual change, also for Japan. Bring that down here. Japan had some pretty high inflation at various times, didn't it? Now, that's a very, very quick and dirty way of showing what you can do with Ravel. There'll be much more information given uh, in tomorrow's the presentation at 6 o'clock London time on using Ravel. And anybody who turns up uh, will be able to get a free copy of Ravel, which will last 60 days where you can test it out with your own data. I hope to see lots of you tomorrow, 6 p.m. London time.